RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, star Broderick Crawford, production Butch Minds the Baby, director Albert S. Rogel... Hollywood screen directors present a Broadway lullaby. Damon Runyon's classic motion picture story, Butch Minds the Baby, starring Academy Award winner Broderick Crawford. Tonight, Mr. Crawford recreates his original, inimitable role of Big Butch. Broadway, Guys and Dolls. Cops and robbers. Damon Runyon. Damon Runyon. He sang its song in a language all its own. Tough guys with soft hearts. And soft guys with tough faces. And what was it? Why, it was the biggest game of cops and robbers in the world. And one of the robbers was Big Butch. Big Butch, hot out of Sing Sing, on parole. Tell me, cop, does the position of this garbage can please you? It pleases me, Butch. It pleases me to see you're such a good janitor for this apartment house. Yeah. Because as soon as you stop being a good janitor, no more parole for keeps. Cop, you talk very tough. And my name isn't Cop. It's Officer Dennis Devlin. Speak louder. I'm a little deep. Yeah, you're deep, all right. Speak faster, too. I'm busy. Butch, why don't you give yourself a break? Speak funnier, Cop. I ain't laughing. Hey, what are you looking at, Cop? Huh? Oh, that that girl. What's it to you what I'm looking at? That girl wheeling the baby buggy is Miss Susie O'Neill. Nice to look at, ain't she? Yeah, she certainly is. Lives in my apartment house. I take her garbage out. Hello, Butch. Oh, hi, hi. I've just had Michael out for a walk. Such a beautiful day, I wanted to see it all. Just once more. That's a funny thing to say. This Susie O'Neill is a very unhappy doll. Her husband gets killed in a plane crash, and she has no job and no money. In fact, the apartment manager tells me she can't pay her rent, and he's going to toss her out on her ear. Oh, that poor kid. Cop, now don't tell me you've got a heart. Sure, I got a... Listen, Butch, you mind your own business, see? I got a beat to look after. Yeah, go beat your feet. Hey, hey, Butch! Hey, big Butch! Well, what if it ain't Harry the Horse? I uh, hear you make your way out of Sing Sing. Yeah, yeah, I do it legal, for rule. Uh, Butch, I I want you should meet my friends. Uh, The driver here is the talker. You remember the talker, Butch. Sure, hi. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and here next to me is one of our most distinguished citizens, Mr. Brandy Smith. Come on, Harry, get on with it. Butch, uh, you still in business? Oh, I don't like to brag, but I'm still the best safe cracker that ever come out of Greenprint. Mm-hmm. It could be we have a job for you, huh, talker? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Butch, you see, it is like this. Brandy Smith is quite a power in this locality. Very high class. Very high class. Yeah. <laughs> like how high? Like uh, his baby contest. Every May, he has a contest for all the babies in the neighborhood. The winning kid, it gets free scratch for her education. Butch, I've gone to quite an expense setting myself up as a liberal, right-thinking citizen. That is right. Of course, sometimes he dabbles in racketeering on the side. Yeah. (laughs) Only I make one mistake. I take a check from the Acme Coal Company in return for protection, and I omit mentioning this check in my income tax. And now Uncle Sam is angry with you? He will be if he gets his mitts on that canceled check. Uh Uh-huh. So where is it? So it is in the vault of the Acme Coal Company, huh, talker? Yeah? 
Yeah, and Brandy wants you should crack this sardine can for him. You make yourself a beautiful dollar. Oh, this is a very illegal business. I'm a three-time loser, and there's a nosy cop named Dennis Devlin who's just dying to put me in the pokey from here on in. Think it over, Butch. We call you tonight. Tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Butch, this is Harry the Horse. Do you think about our proposition? Well, I'll tell you, Harry, I'm just looking over my tools, and the way I figure it, every man is entitled to a hobby. I'll do it. Butch! Butch, you duck! Harry, I gotta go now. Butch! We do it tonight, Butch. Butch. Me and the talker will pick you up right away. Butch! Okay. Butch! I'm coming, I'm coming. I ain't got no roller skates. Butch, I smell the gas. Yeah? Yeah, they say there is gas. It's come from uh, Mrs. O'Neill's apartment. Oh, holy Ike. Hey, the door's locked. Break the door. Well, I'd rather pick the lock. It's more professional. Oh, Butch. Okay, okay. Uh, on the bed. Butch and Mrs. O'Neill. Oh, we got to get some air in here. Oh, open the door, the window, anything. No, no, I'll smash it. Oh. oh, come on, Mrs. O'Neill. Come to, will you? Oh. What are you trying to do? Knock yourself off? Oh. And you a mother, too. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, you? Look at her outside of the window on a fire escape. This is a baby. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> say, say, that's a noisy baby. No, 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 don't you cry. I'll give you a cigar. <laughs> I guess I cheated the kid. It's really a very cheap cigar. Oh, hello, cop. Nothing's going on. What about that broken window? What about the gas? What gas? This gas. Oh, you mean this gas? Yeah. We have a small leak. Almost got the doll on the kid here. Yeah, it looks like attempted suicide to me. Oh, no, Officer Devlin. No suicide. She's a nice doll. You better get out of here, Mrs. Tolucci. Oh, but the butcher is a good <coughs> You're the girl who couldn't pay her rent, aren't you? Cop, why don't you hit her with a rubber hose? Keep out of this, Butch. Oh. Now, now, come on. Miss. Her name is Susie. Susie, why'd you do it? I, I just couldn't go on. Go ahead, I... Cop. Be a hero. Run her in. <coughs> well, I guess it was an accident after all. You know something? You make a lot of noises like a cop. Right now, you're making a noise like a man. Scram, I want to talk to Susie. Take Mike with you. Sure, sure. Once I took care of a horse... Babies operate on the same principle. <laughs> well, one thing about your mic, you don't take up much room on a front stoop. I never cared much for babies myself. Okay, okay, so I'm crazy about babies. Well, I got to admit you're pretty good company. You and I, we're friends, huh? Now, this here doll. This is not for boy babies. I'll tell you, I'm going to have to make you a tiny set of brass knuckles. Hey, Butch, if you wore a girdle, you'd make a wonderful mother. Don't disturb me, cop. Oh, Mike. Mike, I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> I'm going off duty, so I thought I'd take Susie out for some air. Oh, Butch, would you put Michael to bed when the room's aired out? Me? All right, sure. I'll tuck him in before I leave. You aren't leaving. Butch, you're going to stay here and mind the baby. Now, look here, cop. Butch, mind the baby. Okay, I mind the baby. <laughs> Bye, Michael. Goodbye, Butch. Oh, Mike, look what you went and did. Don't you know i got to go crack a safe? <laughs> We are ready to open that box, huh, talker? Yeah. I'm sorry, boys, but... Well, you're going to have to excuse me tonight. Huh? Why? Because what I got here in my arms. Well, let us see. It... Holy yike, it's a midget. Harry. <laughs> Harry, this is no midget. This is a baby. <laughs> what do you do with it? 
I'm babysitting with it for a friend. This is some double-cross brandy. Smith will be very displeased. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, I'll blow your safe some other time. But we must get the canceled check. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. The talker has an idea. Let us take the kid with us. <laughs> you mean, you mean crack a safe with a baby? Yeah. This is very unorthodox. I'll say this for it, it's an idea. Wait, I'll ask the baby. Mike. Do you want to pull this job? Well, that's settled. I'll get my tools and we'll open a box. Now, there, there, my itty bobbly. Uncle Butchie is going to take you with him. are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Butch Binds the Baby, starring Broderick Crawford and presented by RCA Victor. The eternal question of who'll mind the baby tonight will be a problem of the past at your house once you acquire a beautiful RCA Victor television set. You'll get plenty of cut-rate offers from bright babysitters who've learned by constant comparison to prefer their television the RCA Victor way. And you'll be happy staying home yourself, watching television on a set like the Tell Ensemble. The Tell Ensemble, now at your RCA Victor dealers, is a complete, handsome furniture ensemble. A deluxe 12 and a half inch television set mounted on matching legs. Of course, it gives you all those priceless features of performance and dependability that have made RCA Victor far and away America's favorite television. And its suggested list price is only $229.95 plus federal tax. Imagine your home with this marvelous set installed. Upstairs, the best-minded baby in town. And downstairs, the happiest adults. Excited, united, and delighted by the RCA Victor Tell Ensemble. <laughs> Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Butch Minds the Baby, starring Academy Award winner Broderick Crawford in his original role of Big Butch. Larceny is afoot. Scurrying through the darkness into the office of the Acme Coal Company are Big Butch, Harry the Horse, and the Talker. Their equipment includes the plain or garden variety of safe-cracking tools, plus one baby, name of Michael. The baby speaks. Butch, Butch, can you not shut that brat up? This is no brat, Harry. This is my buddy. Yeah? <laughs> Tell me, do you bring a spare set of diapers for your buddy? <laughs> All he wants is his doll. Here you are, Mikey Wikey. Here's your Dolly Wally. <laughs> now, will you please get busy, Wizzy, and open that safey wifey? Talker, here. Talker, you hold a flashlight right there. How does it uh, look to you, Butch? Oh, I'm afraid I've never seen a can like this one before. Oh, what do we do now? I'll have to use instruments. That is bad? Oh, no, not for me. I'll just put a shot of nitro into this box and it'll open it as neat as a hair ribbon. Pass me that bottle of soup in my toolbox. All right, let's see you go. Butch! Yeah? Hey, it is a very small bottle. Yeah, that's right. Hey, it is dangerous. It could blow up the whole building. Butch! What? I hate to tell you this, but the baby has got the bottle. <laughs> yeah. The baby! <laughs> Mike, Mike, a nice, a nice baby now. Give the bottle to Uncle Butchie. Come on. <laughs> well, I, I say this for the kitty. He, he certainly has got a fine sense of humor. Mike, Mike, no, no, don't, don't put that bottle in your mouth, Mike. It's the wrong bottle. No, 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 nipple. 
He's going to drink the nitro. Do babies drink such things? I do not know. Just do not pipe him in my direction. We got we got to be business like talker. You make like uh, like a uh, 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 like this. Like make like that. And I'll grab the soup. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Goodbye, baby. In the treetops, you'll blow us all up if that bottle you drop. Go on. There. Oh, I got it. Oh, all I can say is, this is very undignified for a high-class safe cracker. Still got my technique to think about here. Talker, Talker, tell you what. You cover Michael's eyes. I don't want him to see me do such a thing as blast a strong box. Now there, the shot's in. Now I'll light the fuse. Let's take the baby in the other room. Butch, it will make a big bang? No, it's just a little shot. Make not any more noise than Michael when he blows up a bubble. That was some bubble Michael just blew. <laughs> well, I guess I'm a little rusty after all. Come on, let's examine the inside of the safe. Well, look at this. The whole payroll's here. Say, I could use a little extra scratch. Butch, you look for the check. Talker, load up on some of this long green. The check. Oh, let me see you. The check. The check. Tell me. Hey, hey. Is this the check? Uh, uh, yes. That is the one. Hey, the cops. <laughs> That's gonna put Michael in a most embarrassing position. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, Butch, you keep the check and take it to Brandy. Talker and me will take the cash and meet you after. Butch, you and the baby go that way. Let's go, talker. Now, no, 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 Mike. Are you crying because Harry and the talker run off with all the money? Well, don't you worry, Mike. They are very handy guys. Mike, I can spot a police bullet a mile off. I guess Harry and the talker are not as handy as I figured. Hey, buddy. Just a minute. Huh? I got him covered, Sarge. My officers, what seems to be the trouble? Somebody just blew a safe around... Hey, that's a baby. Yeah, ain't it a shame he's in awful pain? <laughs> uh, teeth? No, it's colic. <laughs> Go on down to the drugstore to get him some medicine. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Looks more like teeth to me. <laughs> it's colic. <laughs> teeth. It's colic. Teeth. Colic. Hey, Sarge, maybe this guy was in on the blow-up. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. The guy's out blowing safe with a baby in his arms. Come on, I ought to have you locked up for a loony. Good night, Sergeant. Oh, that was very close, Mike. Now I'm going to take you home. Randy Smith can wait for his check. But first, hey, come here. Open your mouth. Well, what do you know? The sergeant's right at the wall. You really are cutting a tooth, huh? Where have you been with Mike? Oh, hello, Susie. He's asleep. I, I, I took him for a walk. But Susie's been worried at death. Oh, hello, copper. What are you doing here? Well, Dennis... I mean, Officer Devlin has been very kind. I don't know why I tried to do that terrible thing this evening. Oh, you were just down in the dumps. Everybody gets down in the dumps sometimes. Even me. You know, I figure... I figure I start out just like Mike here. Just a baby. Then I take to stealing and safe cracking and similar pranks and... Before I know it, I'm a highly illegal citizen. Oh, Butch. Mike here, he ain't gonna be like me, huh? You didn't have an education, Butch. I hope Mike will. That takes a lot of scratch, don't it? A lot of scratch, Butch. And tomorrow's Brandy Smith's baby contest. Some lucky youngster's gonna win an education. Come on, Butch. Susie must be exhausted. Yeah, sure, sure. Contest, huh? Brandy Smith. You, you go to sleep, Susie. Maybe we win Mike an education yet. Uh, before you go, Butch, have you got Mike's doll? What doll? You know, the mama doll. Uh-oh. Oh, I think I lose it. Oh, well, Mike doesn't mind. Yeah, but I got a hunch, Susie, it's going to make a lot of trouble for me. Yeah? Butch, this is Brandy Smith. Oh, hiya, Mr. Smith. Hiya, Mr. Smith. 
You are one cold tomato, you are. Do you read the morning papers? What's so important about the morning papers? The cops pick up Harry the horse and the talker. Oh, that. Hey, did they get shot up? They get winged here and there, but not serious. Where's my check? I'll talk to you about it this afternoon. I gotta judge that lousy baby contest of mine this afternoon. Look, Mr. Smith, I'm gonna make it easy on you. You'll just pick Michael O'Neill as the best baby and since his education, then I'll hand you over the check. All right, anything. It's a deal. Now, Butch, you really did it this time. Well, Mr. Devlin, I, uh, I don't follow you. You follow this, Butch? Why, this is Mike's doll. Where do you find it? The police found it, right next to the Acme Coal Company safe. Oh, I, I wonder how it got there. Don't con me, janitor. You were in on that blow-up, weren't you? Now, listen, cop, I'd, I'd love to stay and chat with you, but I gotta go and help prepare Mike for the baby contest. Butch, will you wise up? This doll nails you. What's the beef? The coal company gets its money back. There's a check missing from the safe, Butch. There's a United States attorney in town to pick it up. What are you trying to do, shield Brandy Smith from an income tax rap? Look, cop. Cop, you gotta play along with me for a few hours. Sure, I'm just a hoodlum. The only reason I ain't in jail is because I just got out. Now I'm doing something for somebody else, for, for Mike and for Mrs. O'Neill. And not you and nobody else is going to stop me, cop. Do you hear me? Nobody. Oh, look, Butch. There's Mr. Smith. He's going to start the contest. Yeah, I, I got to talk to him. Mike and me will be right back, Susie. Mr. Smith. Mind if I tag along, Butch? Oh, Cap, I knew I could leave it to you to last things up. Uh, Butch, have you got the... What's Devlin doing here? Just watching, Smith. Just watching. Uh, I, I'm busy now, Butch. See me later when we're alone. Folks, I'm about to award the first prize. There's only one, so I don't want no beats. Say, Mr. Smith. Beat it, Butch. Not now. Now. Pick the winner. Why, you double-crossing heel. Here's the winner. It's Mike. Butch, keep it quiet. Talk to me later. You made a bark, and you said you'd let Mike win the contest. Okay, I got the check now. Oh, hey, Mike, Mike. Oh, Mike, you oughtn't to take things out of people's hands now. Give Mr. Smith that check. Give it to me, you brat. Don't you go call on Mike a brat, or I'll tear your ears uh, off. I think I... Take that check. Cop, this is no time to start acting like a cop. Mr. Smith, if you'll just accompany these gentlemen in the blue uniform. No, 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 wait a minute. That's so you... my property. So you did this for Mike, is that it, Butch? Ah, you went and ruined everything. Dennis, Butch, what happened? I think we just lost a judge, Susie. Hmm? Okay, copper, act like a cop and make with the bracelets. No, no bracelets, Butch. I think the state can spare you for a few minutes. Because, Butch, you've got to judge the contest. Ladies and gentlemen, as a police officer of the city of New York, it's my pleasure to announce that the contest will be judged by Big Butch. Now, be impartial. You mustn't show any preference, Butch. No, 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 of course not. Folks, I'll have you know that I am imp... 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 Impartial. Impartial in this contest. However, after due consideration, I have decided I am very impartial in favor of a baby named Mike O'Neill. Oh, he wins the first prize. Oh, Butch. Well, Mike, you win it fair and square, huh? There's not a better-looking baby in the house. Now, listen to me, Mike. You play it straight, see? Don't pick up no bad habits like cracking safes, or I'll have to come back and put the arm on you. Why, Butch? You sound like you're going away. Well, Susie, I got an important engagement with the with the cop here. Don't worry, Susie. Maybe we can fix it so Butch won't be gone very long. Let's go, copper. You know, cop, I feel good. I feel just like I come out on top after all. I guess it's like Harry the Horse says. Sometimes it's the funniest horse that wins the race. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking. You have just heard the last act of Butch Minds the Baby, and our star, Broderick Crawford, with our guest screen director, Albert S. Rogel, will be with us in just a moment. Next Friday, one of America's favorite comedians brings a delightful comedy performance to the screen director's playhouse. Our story, for the first time on the air, is Miss Grant Takes Richmond, and recreating her original role will be Lucille Ball with screen director Lloyd Bacon. Now, here again is tonight's star... 
Roderick Crawford. Ron? You know, I've been trying to count up all the acting awards you've won this past year in addition to the Oscar. But I've run out of fingers. How many was it, anyway? Oh, I really can't say, Jimmy. I flunked first grade arithmetic, too. <laughs> oh. Well, at any rate, I know you received amazing recognition, both from the experts and from the great American public. Guess what that makes me think of? I don't have to guess, Jimmy. Everything makes you think of RCA Victor's new 45 phonograph and records. <laughs> well, that makes me a typical American music lover, Brad. You know, honestly... It's amazing the way both great musicians and plain music lovers like me have taken the 45 RPM system to their hearts. In just a year, it's become the fastest-selling record system in history. And among the musical maestros who praise its superb tone quality are Aturbi, Stokowski, Toscanini... And, of course, Rod Crawfordy. Oh, 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 I never knew you were a maestro, Brad. Why, at one time, I intended to go in for a musical career. Didn't practice enough to suit my teacher, so I was, uh, I, uh, uh, You were what? Thrown out on my career. <laughs> but I often pile a bunch of classical records on my Victrola 45 and pre pretend to be conducting them for the benefit of my two-year-old son, Kim. I really like to do that. Yeah, but how does Kim like it? Oh, he just keeps right on making airplane noises. Sometimes he even acts like a child. <laughs> you know, Brad, a great maestro like you ought to have a chance to perfect his conducting in solitude. You ought to have a second Victrola 45 for your own room, as so many people do. Yeah, Kim would like that. So would my wife. Come to think of it, so would I. Well, then you ought to take advantage of a wonderful combination value which RCA Victor dealers are offering right now to celebrate the first birthday of the 45. You know, with every Victrola 45 purchased, you get a special first anniversary album of 10 records for the usual price of the Victrola 45 alone, only $29.95. Honest? Honest. And wait till you hear these records by Wayne King and Vaughn Monroe and Tommy Dorsey, Perry Como. Oh, wait a minute. You get all that in a Victrola 45 too for only $29.95? That sounds too good to be true, Jimmy. Oh, you're so right. But if you don't believe it, just ask your RCA Victor dealer. Ladies and gentlemen, the short story, Butch Minds the Baby, was written by our greatest expert on sentimental tough guys, the late Damon Runyon. But putting the story on the screen required another kind of expert, a motion picture artist who could turn the Runyon characters into real people, People as real as New York and Broadway, just the way the writer imagined them. Now I'd like you to meet him. The director of such Damon Runyon pictures as Butch Minds the Baby and Tight Shoes, and of course many, many other films, Mr. Albert S. Rogel. Thank you, Broderick Oscar Crawford. <laughs> and I'm sure that Damon Runyon would have praised your performance very highly tonight and pause to write a note with that little gold pencil of his. Al, I understand that he couldn't talk during the last few years of his life. That's right, Brod. You see, he suffered from cancer of the throat. And ladies and gentlemen, no man ever had a more fitting or noble monument than Damon Runyon. It's called the Damon Runyon Cancer Fund. And I think you folks should know that Broderick Crawford and Universal International Pictures are contributing their fees for tonight's show to that fund. And the Screen Directors Guild is right in there with us, Al contributing its proceeds to the program. And my thanks to the Guild for giving me this opportunity to help. Good night, Al, and good night, everyone. Good night, Brad. And good night to you, Broderick Crawford and Albert S. Rogel. Remember next Friday, Lucille Ball and Miss Grant Takes Richmond with screen director Lloyd Bacon, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Butch Minds the Baby was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, who soon will release Winchester 73, starring James Stewart, Shelley Winters, Stephen McNally, and Dan Duryea. Roderick Crawford appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, producers of No Sad Songs for Me, starring Margaret Sullivan, Wendell Corey, and Vivica Lindfors. Albert S. Rogel's latest production is The Admiral Was a Lady, a United Artists picture. Included in tonight's cast were Stephen Dunn, Francis Robinson, Jerry Hausner, Herb Vigran, Ed Max, Wilms Herbert, Gail Bonney, and Frank Barton. Butch Minds the Baby was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. And original music was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced under the supervision of Howard Wiley and is directed by Bill Karn. You are invited to listen again next Friday when RCA Victor presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Lucille Ball, production Miss Grant Takes Richmond, director Lloyd Bacon. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.